Hey, hey man, welcome behind the scenes at DRG Custom Fabrication. As the header actually says, we're gonna be discussing the Titan 25T CNC press brake from Langmar. Um, I don't normally do videos like this. I usually don't do ones where I'm doing reviews on tools or pieces of equipment and stuff. I actually build custom barbecue carts. Um, but here, once I got this machine, I, you know, I'm like you, if you're watching this video, you've probably done hours of research, pulling up things on the Titan 25 to try to see how it works. Is it worth the money? Um, and you probably like me on some of the videos have seen where there were some spots where there could have been some improvements. But for the money, you cannot beat this CNC press brake. So when I placed the order for mine, they told me it was gonna be probably about a year before I got it. I was absolutely fine with that because I'd been wanting one for so long. Um, I got it a couple months ago. Since I've had it, I've had some time to run it through its paces, play with it, uh, bend some incredible metal with it. It is absolutely phenomenal. If you've got a small shop, this is gonna just be a game changer for you like it was for me. Um, but there were some shortfallings with it and I did some upgrades to it. And I really think you guys are gonna like some of these upgrades. I haven't seen anybody else on YouTube doing anything to it other than doing away with the, I call them headache bars that came out, which were the, the two handles that you had to hit. Um, I did do away with those. I'm gonna show you what I did. It's extremely simple for you to get rid of the, you still have the buttons, but you get rid of the big arm sticking out. Um, so if you wanna go downstairs, look at it, see what I've done. If there's anything that I've done, I'm sure there's gonna be some things you're not gonna like, but there's probably gonna be some stuff you're really gonna like. So we're gonna take it downstairs to the shop. I wanna go up close with the machine and I'll show you all the upgrades that I did to it. Uh, so without further ado, let's go downstairs and check it out and get your thoughts. Come on, let's go. Let's go down to the shop. Come on. All right, so here we are at my Titan 25T. Uh, as you can see, blatantly obvious really quick. You can see there's been some upgrades. I'm gonna go through some of them that I did. We'll start at the top and work our way down. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And while that's booting up, I'll just run down the list of some of the stuff that I did. Obviously, when this boots up, you're gonna see that I actually added a second monitor to this machine. Uh, one of the reasons was I wanted something that was clearer, that was brighter, and that was up higher so I could actually see it. Uh, one of the problems with the screen that comes on the Titan, it's an excellent screen. Don't, I, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about the screen, but the problem is, is that as you can see, the machine is much lower, lower than me. I'm six foot six. So when you're looking at the screen and you're looking down on it, the bottom of it kind of gets cloudy looking and you have to bend down to really see it nice and clear. So I needed some way to fix that. So I actually added an external touch screen monitor. So when this boots up, I'll show you how it works. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I called Landmar. They will tell you how to add a secondary screen, but they say that you cannot run two screens at the same time, um, which obviously you're gonna see here in a minute, you absolutely can. Um, Moving down, you're gonna see the one biggest issue with the Titan is I did away with the, what I called the headache handlebars, which were the two green buttons for the jog that stuck way out about three feet. Um, if you wanna get rid of those, you can do it and it's not gonna cost you not one penny to get rid of the handlebars. Uh, the handlebars themselves are only held into the machine with two screws. If you, on the bottom of these ends, there's a Allen wrench head if you unscrew that bolt this end will actually pull off of your your arms that stick out as soon as it pulls off there's a plug in there you can unplug that and take this whole entire cap and button off take the two bolts out slide the entire handlebar out cut it off right where it bends at the very first bend Put it back in, bolt it in, run the wire back through. You can plug this right back up. You don't have to do any wiring. You can slide them back on, tighten that screw back up, and you get rid of the handlebar, the headache handlebars. So you could still use these as your jog. You still both of them work. They function like they're supposed to, but you don't have them sticking out three feet in front of the machine where you're going to hit your head. And I can guarantee you, everybody out there that's got one of these has done that. Um, Moving on down, you'll see that I actually bought this light. It's actually an LED light that turns, turn it on at the bottom, lights up the whole bed uh, so you can really see what you're doing. 
Uh, since this is booted up now, I'll just show you. I'm hoping you could see it on the screen. I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you could see it. Anything you do on this screen happens on this screen. So they work in conjunction with each other. If I hit on here, it changes over here, as you can see. If I hit over here, no matter what I go to, punches, setting up, back gauge, everything, they are connected together. So everything this monitor does, this monitor responds to it. So I absolutely love that. It was the coolest thing. I was so happy I was able to add that to it. This is much brighter, it's clearer, it's cleaner. All the fonts on it are bigger, it's easier to see. You know, I'm in my late 50s, my eyesight ain't what it used to be, so this makes life a whole lot easier. Um, also on the front, I actually added this magnetic calculator, uh, you know, for working out your, your widths that you need for your V dies. Um, that was just something that a lot of people have uh, little calculators thrown in a drawer or laying up on the machine or something. I just like this bigger style. I did go online and actually copied um, this, which is actually the sheet. I don't know if you could see it, but it's actually a tonnage chart. Uh, this is a really cool little feature to have. So you can actually look on it for the thickness of metal, uh, the bend you want to do, it'll tell you what the tonnage that's recommended for that bend to make sure your machine is capable of doing it. And it'll also tell you what the V-die needs to be. Um, you know, most of you that have one of these or if you're thinking about getting one and you're not sure, the rule of thumb is eight times the thickness of your material. So all your V-dies, like if you buy the four-way die, there are four different sizes. It's a 0.63, a 0.866, a 1.378, and a 1.989. You use the die at the bottom based off of eight times the thickness of the material you're trying to bend. That's the only way to get the best bend, not overwork your machine. Um, so just keep that in mind. One of the other things that I changed, you may be aware that when you first get it, all your punches are held in by these blocks of steel that have Allen wrench screws that hold them on. And you have to have an Allen wrench and you gotta unloosen each Allen wrench every time you wanna change a die. Well, I hate that. So what I did was, is I ordered these from a company online. They're the style that you can pull out on and turn to any, any angle that you want. But if you wanna replace a die, I don't need an Allen wrench. You simply unloosen, take out your die, We'll put your die back in. That quick, the dies are back in. I don't need an Allen wrench. I don't have to keep looking for it. This was so much more convenient for me. Now I realize it sticks away from the machine about three and a half inches, uh, but you're bending all the way down here. I personally, with the things that I'm bending, have not had any issues with what I was bending coming up and hitting them. But if I was going to bend something that did have that, I kept all the screws and the Allen wrench uh, which I have in a drawer down there, I'll show you in a second. Just in case I ran into that problem, I could unscrew these really quickly, put the screws in, get it all set up so I could still bend. Next thing that I did was, everybody needs a toolbox. You need somewhere to store all your gauges and your mics and your squares and everything. And instead of just throwing them up on the top of the machine or something like that, I wanted like some kind of a toolbox. So I had bought this really small little toolbox. It's just a single drawer toolbox off of Amazon. If anybody's interested, I'll send you the, the link for it. Uh, I love it, it's absolutely perfect. I mounted it right here on the bottom. You open it, it you can keep all your squares, all your gauges, everything in here. That's also where I keep the Allen wrench for this if I have to go back to it. It's also where I kept the bag of screws in case I wanted to change those out if I had to. So I really like that feature. I also printed out the entire hard manual for the Titan. So in here, I could just quickly look at any of the punches, the dies, it would tell me what they were rated for. Um, anything that I needed to try to set up in the machine, it was really easy to go this way than it was to use my phone and scan a QR code and then look through the online book and find it and blow it up and all that. This was just so much more convenient for me. 
Oh, and by the way, if you do go with the little toolbox that I have there, when you mount it, I drilled two holes up through the bottom plate, tapped them and put um, little eight millimeter screws in it. You have to drop that down about an inch because when the back gauge comes forward, it will hit that if you put it up flush against the bottom. So you have to drop it down about a half inch. When you purchase it, they offer this transformer that's a DT2000W. And it's a transformer that allows you to plug into 110 and power this machine, which is 240. Now I have 240 in my shop, but I wasn't sure that where I was gonna put it, that I was gonna have 240. So I purchased that when I bought the machine. It was very affordable, I thought. I'm glad I did because where I have it sitting now, which is where it's going to primarily stay, I don't have 240 around here. So it was really convenient to be able to plug into the 110 to actually power everything. Now, the best thing that I think I have built that I think is absolutely incredible is if you're like me, when you ordered this, you went ahead and bought the punches and the dies from Lenmar when you got the machine because they were extremely affordable through them. If you try to buy those outside in another company, you're gonna see that the prices are way higher. So I ordered pretty much all the dies that they offered. Well, when you get them, it's like you need some place to put your punches and dies. Well, most of the people throw them on the bottom shelf. That's just not me. I want everything organized. I want to keep everything as long as I can, keep it as nice as I can. And I didn't want the dies just thrown around. Plus, they're extremely heavy. So you keep throwing them on top of each other. I was just afraid you were going to nick the bottom of it and leave a mar in it. And then every time you bend a piece, of a piece of metal, it was going to leave a scar on it. So I designed and built this, which is actually a tool tray that slides completely out of the machine. I'll show you. You flip the two yellow levers. Let me just slide this over. Flip the two yellow levers. The entire tray pulls out full length. The, the shelf is actually 24 inches deep. Uh, you could go wider. I didn't because I actually have the, um, the DT 2000 watt uh, transformer and that's where I wanted to keep it. I didn't want to like hang it on the side or anything. So that's the best spot for it. So this is as, as wide as I could go with the tray, but it holds all their tools and I still have plenty of room for more tools. Um, I built the entire thing out of 10 gauge steel. Uh, the L brackets was actually what I used from when you got the machine. Linmar had already bolted it to the pallet using these really, really thick heavy duty angle iron. I cut that up and used it as my L brackets for this actual shelf. The hinges I got off of Amazon, they're rated for 500 pounds. They work really smooth. They're really nice. Then you put it back, you just pull up the levers. That easy, you put all your tools away. I love that. I think that was just the, the, the best thing I think that I have added to this. Uh, the other thing is, is I did not like the jog buttons. Uh, now I have, there's a gentleman on YouTube that I watch him all the time, it's him and his wife, and he runs a, uh, a fab shop called Chasson Smokes. Uh, super nice guy. He's got one of these. He's done quite a few videos on actually using it and showing it in operation. If you wanted to check those out, uh, like I said, he's got some really good videos there. There is a video on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and type in deleting the jog handles, on the Titan 25, there is a guy on there that actually walks you through removing these completely and going to a foot pedal. So mine still has these on it. I didn't want to throw them away. They were really nice switches. And I don't know if later down the road, I might want to use them for something, but I disconnected these and I went with a double foot pedal. So the guy that shows you how to delete these arms he shows you everything about installing one of these. He gives you walkthroughs. He shows you how you hook it up. I think he even has, I think he even put together a wiring harness kit that you could buy from him to actually swap out these jog handles for a double foot pedal. Um, I did the double foot pedal. I'm just more comfortable with that. So the first pedal actually works as your, your safety switches. And the second one is actually to run the ram down to do your band. Works flawless, I love it. I like this better than the handles. Um, I mean, I know 
Uh, the guy from Chasson Smokes, he said he likes the handles on his because he has some younger people that work in his shop sometimes and he's treating them to work on this machine. And he likes the idea of knowing that their hands have to be out of the way so nobody gets injured. I totally get that, I totally understand it. I think it makes a lot of sense. I do think he should shorten the handles up like this. They still have to use both hands, but you don't have those things sticking out where you run into them. So other than that, that's about all that I've done, I believe. Um, other than the basics where I've uh, run all my wires through uh, wire looms and all that in the back so everything was nice and neat. If you do go with the pull-out tool tray that I made, on the back of your unit you do have the crossbars that are supports for the actual cart. You do have to move those up and redrill new holes. Took me five minutes to do it. It was absolutely no big deal. I'll walk around back at the end of this video, take a picture of it. I'll stick a picture up here so you can see what it is I'm talking about. But other than that, that is the machine. Um, I hope you guys like the upgrades. I hope it gave you guys some kind of ideas on something to do with yours. And maybe it gave the people out there that's thinking about purchasing one, but they're not really sure. Um, I'm telling you, I love the machine. Uh, you will see videos on YouTube where there were people complaining about when they first got theirs that the bags of bolts were mixed up and there were bolts missing, there was parts missing. Um, that was when Landmark first started pushing these things out. Uh, since then, they have subsequently done a lot better job on organizing and packaging and everything. This machine came with every bolt. Everything was labeled correctly. All the bags were there. I had no issues whatsoever with assembly. Now, I did have a problem with the back gauge that the um, stepper motors, when you would go to jog the uh, back gauge backwards, one motor wanted to go back and one motor wanted to come forward. Same thing with the up and down. One wanted to go up, one wanted to come down. So I called them, talked to them, come to find out from the factory they were wired wrong. So they walked me through taking it out, uh, changing the wires around, putting them back together. It took me 15 minutes. Uh, since then, everything has worked absolutely great. Um, I will tell you that when it comes to customer service at Langmar, it is absolutely amazing. I have had to call there on this machine, and not just for issues or anything, but because I didn't understand some of the program. Uh, every single time I've called, Someone's answered the phone. They have always put me through to a tech. The tech has spent the time that was needed to walk me through to get it straightened out. Um, I can't say enough about their customer service. It was absolutely amazing. So other than that, I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you make a decision. I hope I gave you guys some ideas on some stuff to do to yours. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much. I hope this helped. God bless you. God bless America. And as always, Get back in the shop and start bending some metal and see what you can make. These things are absolutely amazing. I love it. God bless. I'll see you on, maybe I'll see you on another video one day.